Do it. Thank you, Robert. Okay. So we're on question 33 of advertising. And question 33 is about virtual office websites. And virtual office websites are for companies that are completely virtual, that don't have a brick and mortar, that do only online brokerage. So I don't think that applies to us. Um, they have pretty much the same rules as IDX, although you'll notice in the um, in the new rules, in the new MLS rules where they um, made change the rule for IDX, where you have to give the listing agent's name and contact information. That is not the same if you have a vow. It's only, only, only for um, for IDX. Okay. Advanced fee advertising. Okay, what is an advanced fee? An advanced fee is compensation that a real estate licensee e obtains for services before they are performed. In view of the potential for abuse, the DRE regulates this. And I'm not going to read this, I'm just going to tell you. The DRE um, regulates these advanced fees. So let's just say that you charge that you wanted to charge an advance fee, a fee upfront for, um, I don't know what, for just for something that you're going to do for them upfront. And you want it paid now and you're gonna charge it now. And we, um, before it's done, you're gonna make them pay as part of the contract. And then you're gonna do the work during the contract period. That's an advance fee. And it's so regulated that before you can even, and, that, and that's if you wanna advertise one. Okay, so gee, we, um, you know, if you, I, I don't, I don't even know how that would go. You give us a hundred dollars and we will completely clean up your house and get it ready to sell or something like that, where we're doing two, we're doing something else. So they don't like it. The DRE doesn't like when you collect the fee before you do the work, or maybe you want an advance on your commission to do something, whatever. So people are allowed to advertise that you are allowed to do that. You could advertise that, you know, we, for a hundred dollars, you know, pay $100 when you sign our, our, purchase, our purchase agreement and we will do X, Y, and Z. Um, and, and that's an advanced fee. And before you can advertise it, you have to get permission from the, from the, um, from the, ML, from the DRE. Only the DRE can't hold you up. So you have to send your advertising to the DRE. And if, they don't, if you don't hear back from them in 10 days that you can't do it, then you can do it. They have to get back to you within 10 days. And if they don't, then you're fine. So I, I'm not sure what people would charge a fee for because I've never seen anyone do it with us. But if you ever were thinking of charging one, you should know that there's a whole scheme here. And the DRE doesn't have to, they, have, they can have to approve the whole thing. They can say it can't be done, whatever. It, uh, um, what happens if a licensee violates the commissioner's orders on advanced fee rules? Well, pretty much when you violate anything, you're going to get a fine and you're going to get in trouble. So um, we wouldn't do that. Okay, um, I'm going to skip over the rest of this because we're we don't really use advanced fees that I know of. Okay, advertising over the internet. Are there any special restrictions on advertising over the internet? Yes. There are no federal laws restricting internet advertising, but the DRE has a regulation that primarily targets persons advertising real property services, those services for which a license is required to potential purchases in California purchasers, but who are not like real estate licensees in California. Basically, the regulation permits internet advertisements if the advertiser does not direct his or her services to any particular person or customer, so it's a general advertisement to anyone who wants it, not any particular group, not, you know, gee, if you're, um, I don't know, if you're Asian and you want to live in, in, in this area, um, you know, come to us, we, you know, we can place you. Nothing that would, that would specify a kind of people. The law should have no impact on California real estate. The law? You mean the advertisement should have no impact on California? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Um, so that's it. I mean, there really aren't any MLS rules, really. There are rules if you if you use the IDX, and that's within the rules that they give you. But for the most part, you're allowed to advertise.
property on the on the on the internet on the um on your website okay but that's that was all we i i guess we pretty much got through most of advertising last time so that's all we have with advertising does anyone have any advertising questions okay hearing none i want to also talk about i knew that we weren't going to get done so i want to talk a little bit about record retention how long and what do we need to retain records? And mostly that is for the broker. It is mostly our duty to retain the records. But as an agent, you don't wanna rely on us. What if, what if our data gets hacked or stolen or messed up or somebody you know, does something to it? You, 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 know, you probably wanna keep what you keep as well, just so that you're aware if you get asked for it, you know, broker you're going to be responsible for producing all documents that we have to save that that you give that you guys send us but you guys usually have emails and other things that don't get into the file and those need to be saved because you never know when you're going to need them okay which records must a broker retain to comply with the law and the dre record retention the law requires broker to maintain copies of all listings, deposit receipts, canceled checks, trust records, and other documents executed by him or her or obtained by him or him or her in connection with any transaction for which a real estate broker license is required. So it's pretty much everything we have in a transaction. But I know that everything we have in a transaction doesn't always get sent to the TC and put in Skyslope or sent to Skyslope. For those who don't know Skyslope, each Skyslope file has its own email address. So if you were, if you just included that in all your emails, then everything would be in the file. Or if you have a particular email and you want to send it, then then um, then you can do it that way. You know, you can you can do it that way. Okay. Okay. We need to be related including leases. So right. So we need everything relating to leases, offers to purchase, correspondence. That includes offers that aren't accepted. And I put a place in Skyslope for that, but no one, no one really gives those to their TC apparently because we don't really have any of those. But you have them, all of you have them. And one day you might get questioned on a transaction. Uh, we just got a new lawsuit today. It's on a transaction that didn't close where that got canceled. And if we don't have a file in Skyslope, then we have no documents just because it got canceled. We still need to be able to show why it got canceled and what was done and how it happened. Otherwise, I think we're going to be in trouble. So um, please make sure that you keep your stuff as well as sending as much as you can to your TC to put in the file or for you to put in the file. Um, how long do we have to keep, Cindy? No, we're, getting, we're getting to that. Well, it's, it's three years per the DRE, but you know, lawsuit on a breach of contract is four years. So if you threw everything away at three years, you might get sued in year four and not have any of your documents, which could be painful. Um, we try to keep everything five years. We, I think escrow, we keep one year longer than, than our other stuff, but the DRE only requires three years. I have another question. Why did you just say though? You said you said losses. I, I didn't understand about the well, four a, years. A, a breach of you know a breach a breach of contract lawsuit. Someone sues sue, someone sues you for breach of contract. Okay, well, lawsuit. That was the word I didn't hear. Yeah, okay. it basically has a four year breach of con breach of written contract is a four year statute of limitations. Breach of oral contract is only two, and fraud is three. Okay, I still have a question. Uh huh. So. You know how we get a link that we can send to our clients to keep? Right. Pull up the you know, files. Of the whole file, right. How long does that, is that link good for? Robert, are you listening? Because I don't know. Do you know? I'm listening. But you don't know either? <laughs> well, I, I don't. Mean, I, 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 here, I, I think it's good, good for right? three years. The link? I think so. Interesting. We should find out. I mean, at least the next taxable year, right? Well, certainly anything you get in the link is, is in Skyslope, and we still have that. So Skyslope if they stuff. can't open it, then I can... Right. You, you, know. you wouldn't be able to open it, but anything that's on that thing, we should, we should have. I'm, I'm 
kind of more worried about documents that never make it to the file. Yeah, like like unaccepted offers. Yeah, and correspondence <laughs> and unaccepted offers, right? And cancellations if it's real soon sometimes. So um, we should keep things. those on our computer for four years, you're saying. At least, five. yeah, four, four to five, but for sure four, because that's the statute of limitations for breach of contract. So, so anything that's over four years old, I can throw away. Yeah, I mean, right, because you can't I really can... be sued under it. Correct. Thank you. Um, okay. Do, okay, do records of electronic communication such as text or instant messages and emails need to be retained? Oh, I think we missed something in here. Um, they do need to be, they, they're going to tell you in here that it's probably not necessary. They're not considered, they're, they're con, electronic messages are considered of a ephemeral nature. Is that, I, I think that's how you pronounce it, ephemeral um, nature, which means that they're not meant to be part of a contract kind of thing. They're just, you know, for people to know things. But a lot of times we're using text for sure, if not instant messages and whatever, or any any other form, we are to do things that to make agreements. So if you're making an agreement, if there's anything in a text that would um, that would help if this was a mess, you think, okay, it's two years later and I just got sued. Do I need to know this stuff? Yeah, probably. So texts we should keep. I re I really think that. Um, not ones that are just about an appointment or a this or, you know, but any text that has any kind of substance in it, um, any kind of agreement, any kind of deadline, we need to keep those. And those need to get into the file so that we have them forever. The company. Maybe. I have a question for the group and I don't know how you guys keep your, your file. So when we have a transaction, I mean, at least for me, I try to kind of make it as organized as possible when we have a transaction or a listing or whatever, don't you guys keep this in a group uh, in your email instead of just having all the bunch of email? How are you supposed to keep them organized? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I mean, by their they, file name. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. By the the address. Exactly. Yeah. I, I have a file name, and when they close. I tried to get, put it on the USB file, right? Because otherwise my computer is gonna be really full. Right. I mean, do you guys, how do you guys do it? Unless I'm doing it different than what you guys are doing. Well, I keep a f address and then because of all the multiple offers, I have a, you know, a second file for all the offers that are separate. But then when you say four years, yeah. And I keep well, the no, my computer keeps I have some pretty old stuff in it. Okay. I wonder how I'll get I mean, like the last time, Cindy, I asked for a USB file, we closed a deal, and all of the transaction or any communication were in that listing, and then you gave me a copy of a USB. We used to have a CD, but now we don't do right. CDs anymore. Right. But now um, I ask you if we can do like a USB file. So you put all of the uh, communication and files. I mean, does anyone do that too? Or, or is it just me that did that? You're not talking about our file. You're talking about what you have, right? Yeah, yeah, could be your file too and what I have. I guess not, I'm not hearing anything. I guess nobody really. But we can do it. We can find out how people what people do. Let, we could do some sort of a survey on that. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, so, Tess, the one but, thing I can say is that I had a client that recently asked me for, um, for me to put it on a a, a USB. Yeah. Because she doesn't use a computer. And she couldn't read it on her phone, and so she wanted some record of it that was not just the link. So I put it on a USB for her and gave it to her. Okay. Now, what you're saying is actually a pretty good idea because if something happens to your computer or something, I don't know, you don't have the link anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they're saying, yes, you have it, but what about all your emails 
texts and everything. Sometimes I send my text messages to my computer so that I have them in an email. Um, I think that's a good idea to put everything on a USB for yourself. I, I, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Or you could, uh, and, and again, the more stuff that you, that you give to, to the file, the more we will have it. So you don't need to keep it as much if you know we have it in our file. I mean, I still like that you keep it, but, um, you know, we'll have it when we need it. We'll be able to pull it up. So, if, you know, if you get to the end and you find that you have a lot of emails or texts or something and you have to do, you have to download them like that. I would see if you can make a copy for the TC to upload into the file because then mm. we'll all have it. I mean, I so, don't have to, but it's it's just the more we have, the more you know we'll be able to find when we need it. Hopefully, I have a question, really quick. So, I like to add if if the agent doesn't add the TC into the into the conversation, I usually will add the TC in. If she is added into the conversation, does that mean that that email is going into SkySlope when she closes the closes the transaction? I do not know. I, I should know the answer. I feel like I should know the answer to that. And I don't. Um, I don't know if they turn around and email everything directly to the file. Because like I said, the file has its own email address. If you add that, then everything just goes in the file. Can we um, find that out, please? I will find out. Yes. Okay. Yes. Are all emails. Yes. Good question. Thank you. I would hope so. Hmm. I would. I would hope so. Okay, um, so they're, they're asking, is there ever a time when you should keep a text or anything else? And I say, yes. If, if there's anything substantive in it, you need to keep it. Um, how long must records be? How long must records be maintained? So it's three years under, under the DRE record retention policy, um, which is good because it means they can only audit you for three years because you don't have to keep your records after that. Um, they recommend that for risk management purposes, you keep them longer. And like I said, we do. Um, now that we have electronic records for both our TC files and our escrow files, um, they'll probably just be kept forever. And then, you know, at some point, once we're years into that, we're going to get, it's going to be so easy when people ask for stuff and we can get rid of our storage and all that stuff. But right now we're not quite there yet. Um, we've had TC records probably for three or four years, but not escrow is only started in I don't know, 19, I think. Okay, um, can records be maintained in electronic form? Yes, of course they can. Um, and that's all it says is, you, you know, as long as you can give them to them when you need them, they're fine. Um, if electronic is, storage is used, the broker must also maintain the broker's office a way to view the file. Yes, so, so if, even if, if it's electronic, if someone, if the DRE walks in, you better be able to call it up. Um, that's us. Okay. Can they be maintained offsite? Of course they can. Um, is a broker required to make records available for a DRE audit? Uh, duh. Um, of course. Um, yeah. Can you lose your license for failing? Yeah, probably. Um, record retention. How long should you keep the documents? Okay. So the short answer they give is five to seven years. I think five is plenty. I can't imagine you needing them after that. We're not accountants. Maybe accountants keep stuff for seven years, but it's a freaking long time. Um, okay, for purpose of auditing, let's keep for, yeah, for DRE, it's just three years. That's their rule. What's the proper way to dispose of them? Obviously, when you dispose of real estate records, if they're electronic, it's kind of easy. I guess you just erase them. But if you have anything in written or any, any hard copy files, please make sure that you destroy them and not just throw them in your trash can, put them out on the street. I mean, I'm pretty sure that most of us do not have our trash gone through on the street, that we're not like that kind of people. But, um, you know, you just, you, you just want it to be confidential. Um, uh, personal information, they, they say only for personal information, but pretty much anything. Okay. Okay, how long does the IRS have? Okay, period which the IRS might start is also three years from the date your return is filed. So after three years from the date your return is filed, they can't come back and reopen it either. Um, unless you understate your income by more than 25%, I guess. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, okay, state tax audits. In California, four years to assess taxes for a particular year. So a state tax audit has to be within four years when the return is filed, and I think it's six years, oh, again, if it's more than 25% off. 
it never the statute never runs if you don't file at all. It just goes on and on. It's it's because it's from the date of filing. Um, okay, that's the state tax laws. Permanent records and semi-permanent records. Um, if it's truly permanent, then obviously it should be like like tax returns and and income tax you know stuff like that. Those should be kept forever, as long as your you know permanent records should be kept forever. Is basically what they're saying. Um, pension stuff. Angel. Problem is, is not keeping them from knowing where they are when you need them, right? Huh? So anybody can keep documents. Hey, I have a question for you. Yes. Fuck, madam, because we're talking about it, the, the legalities of it. Sa pag meron tayong mga transaction or email, like for instance. Oh, was she not talking? Oh, she wasn't talking to us? <laughs> oh, she is. If she is, you're on your own. Well, and she now, was, yeah. I was totally confused. But she muted. Yeah, because she's I talking muted. in another language. I muted her. Did that sound like that? She was she talking. Started, to she's talking to somebody about taxes. Oh. <laughs> oh. And then I thought, oh my gosh, did, did she just change to another language? And I thought, no. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I guess that's the end of record retention. It wasn't a big one, but I didn't realize how little advertising we had left to do. Um, just to remind everybody, September 30th, the moratorium, the, the eviction and um, rent control moratorium for single family residences and condos and uh, duplexes. If you live in one side, the owner lives on one side, it will end on September 30th, come October 1st. If it doesn't get extended, and of course they're saying it's not going to be, um, then we will be back to pre-COVID rules, which means that if you have a single family residence, you can evict a tenant on, on a month to month. If the tenant's on month to month, you can evict them just based because they're on month to month. You don't need a reason. You don't need to fake anything or say anything. You just, sorry, it's time for you to go. Um, so that's what's going on. Hopefully a lot of landlords collected money and we're gonna be able to start um, eviction soon. So that's important. Um, let's stop sharing. What, um, I'm trying to think what else has come up this week. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. I signed up for a class on the, uh, with the, with the, attorney from Carr on the new RPA um, towards the, towards in October and come September, I think probably three times a week, I'll be teaching the new RPA. So you can pick whichever one's best for you. So that, cause I want to make sure everybody gets into a class about the changes. Cause apparently there are not only changes in what we, what you can visually see, which is, you know, the way it's set up, but also in um, some of the rules. So um you don't need to if you see, a, you know, you can if you want, if you're bored or, or, the, or you see a car offering of the class, you can go if you want, but I will be doing, I'll be taking it and then I'll be teaching you guys um, probably, you know, two or three times a week for a month so that anybody, everybody can figure out a session they can go to because we have to, we have to do that. Um, what else? Anybody else have any questions? And I'm trying to think what else is new and different. Uh, other than that, pretty much life is same old, same old. Um, uh, real estate life. We're taking listings, we're closing, where everybody seems to be working and um, we're doing well. I, I, I get a lot of questions and people, I can tell people are working and they're asking good questions, it's great. So please keep those questions coming. Um, and I know it's none of you who are here, but today I got two, two texts that said, is it okay if I call you? It's always okay that you call me. Nobody has to send me a text first. Um, I just never quite understand. I guess they think I'm busier than, than I can't answer stuff. I don't know. Um, okay, I'm trying to think anybody, anything else? Robert, do you have anything you wanna add by any chance? No, he's on the phone. Okay. They hear from me enough. Um, okay, I just, in case you got something weird. Um, that's pretty much it. If you didn't get the first part of advertising, let me know and I can at least share with you my, um, my, my 
question and answer thing and answer any questions you have. You can go through it real quick and then let me know what questions you have. Was it recorded? Wasn't okay. it recorded? I think it was. I think it was actually, which would even be better than asking me again because you know how that goes. Yes, Robert, I believe it was recorded. I'm sure it was because um, he's been coming.